and dig, 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 dig. and welcome back to the Jen and Julian podcast, first episode of the year. <laughs> I think I already coughed it. I don't blame you already. I'm coughing in- internally. Um, we wanted to talk about something else, but Hi. we feel like we should talk about this today. So, uh, anyway, welcome everyone back to the podcast. Um, it's good to be back. We took a little time off for the holidays. We hope everyone's holidays were awesome and fun and great. Um, and 2018 has started off interestingly, I, I guess I could say. Mm-hmm. So um, today, that's what we'll be talking about is uh, the whole Logan Paul situation. But first, we have some cool things, okay? We have sponsors. And I'm going to read you the sponsors really quickly because... You know, we're going to grab every bit of positivity we can today. They keep our show alive. They keep our show alive. First off, MeUndies, guys. MeUndies, the dopest underwear you could buy. Three times softer than cotton. They have brand new designs all the time. Ships right to your house. Okay? Right now, you guys can get 20% off and free shipping with the the cool... I'm wearing them right now. I wear them all the time. As am I. I have too many pairs. I'm which, wearing boy shorts with like a, a palm tree design on them. Yeah. And you know what, guys? If you're thinking about a gym membership, maybe just start with the MeUndies, okay? <laughs> then go then go for the gym. But trust me, you will love the MeUndies. Go to MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian for 20% off and free shipping. Thank you, MeUndies. Also, guys, Tracker, the tiny device that prevents you from losing all your important items. It's a little tracker. It connects to the app on your phone. Uh, the Tracker Pixel is very, very useful. I use it all the time. Right now, if you go to the Tracker, that's T-H-E-T-R-A-C-K-R dot com slash Jenna Julian, you get 20% off your first order when you go there. Guys, uh, it's a really small investment for something that can really give you a lot of peace of mind for all your important electronics and everything else you have. Thank you, Tracker. Track all your stuff. And lastly, we have a new sponsor, guys. It is Quip. It is the electric toothbrush that looks like it was designed by Apple. It is so clean looking, but it also makes your teeth clean looking. And it's affordable. And it's affordable, guys. It's really dope, okay? So right now, it starts at just $25. And right now, when you go to getquip.com slash Jen and Julian, you get your first free refill pack. You get it first your first refill pack for free. So you don't even you don't need to pay for the first refill. They'll give it to you. But it's a really cool item. It's an electric toothbrush for those who don't want to spend a bunch of money on one and I need a, an affordable but reliable one. Get Quip. So getquip.com slash Jenna Julian. Check it out. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. <sighs> wow. Okay. I'm like, I feel, I feel like I need more caffeine for this conversation, but I also feel like there's not enough caffeine for this conversation. In the world. Um, I also just want to say, I know you guys are, most of you that listen and watch the podcast, like, you know, this is a podcast, like, you know, a lot of it is like, we're just here having a conversation. So maybe we're not going to say everything perfectly. And like, even just trying to gather information and things for this, it feels like this frustrating mess. It's like the most frustrating jigsaw puzzle to try and sit down to, and like organize and lay out so i think the best way for us to do it is to just talk about it so forgive us if we don't say everything perfectly i guess is what yeah I... no that's that's a good point i yeah it's a conversation <laughs> it's like a puzzle i don't want to put together <laughs> yeah and the reality is you know after after something happens where everyone's talking about it there's only so much that can really be like said right. about it. So I kind of feel like when the whole Logan Paul thing happened and then all the videos were happening afterwards, I kind of just like, I watched a bunch of them and then I stopped watching them when they were popping up. Cause I felt like a lot of them were just kind of repeating themselves with that said though, I think a conversation should be had, you know, on the issue, no matter who wants to have it. Yeah. It's just, I want to be able to bring some sort of new aspect or dynamic or thought. Yeah. And I'm I'm going to try my very best to stay calm, <laughs> like yeah. not get too angry, not get too upset because I know that that is a lot of people's feeling right now and you are entitled to feel that way because yeah. uh, some of the stuff that's been on YouTube is is disturbing and upsetting, deeply unsettling to a lot of people and you're justified in that and you're justified in your anger. Um, why don't we just start with how this happened? So, like, I I woke up. Was it New Year's Day? I think it, I think it was the first. 
Yeah. It was the first. Um, really quick, we got these new mics. We're still figuring out the levels and everything, so you just got to talk a little close to it if you All can. Right, yes. That helps. Be patient with me. Yeah. I'm, no I'm, I'm moving No mic. worries, y'all. Um, I woke up New Year's Day, I think, or, you know, we'd taken a nap or something because we were watching, hi, I'm Reed Drummond. Welcome to my frontier. Here's what's happening on the ranch. <laughs> we that, those were happier times before we <laughs> went online. And um, Julian says to me, he was like, did you see Logan Paul's video? And I was like, no. No, I didn't know. <laughs> you know, a normal 30-year-old woman's response to, did you see Logan Paul's video? And um, he was like, yeah, he went to the Jap- Japanese suicide forest. Akigahara. And, and um, you know, filmed someone that had committed suicide. And I was like, all right, I want to watch the video. So I did. I fast-forwarded a little bit to see the part where they got to the forest and where he filmed this person's body. And... Uh, my first initial reaction was, I, it, it was so incredibly difficult to watch and not in a, like, I mean, you watch documentaries, you watch crime shows, like you've, you've seen footage of people who have died before. You know, I was a juror on a murder trial. I watched a video of a crime scene of a, it was like a very real experience. Um, yeah, it was disturbing to see it, but I was overwhelmed with the sense of this is so wrong like i i feel so disrespectful seeing this i even feel just like watching it even watching it i feel like i'm being disrespectful to that person and yeah. their family um and i continued to watch it through to the end and julian looked at me and was like why are you still watching that like why are you watching it and i was like i want to see i want to see how bad it is i want to see the whole thing and i want to see how bad it is and um obviously we I was desperately trying to milk this two week vacation <laughs> that we've given ourselves. And, you know, people just come in with we need to hear what you think. We wanna hear what you think. And um this is sort of the nature of our platform is that I'm I'm angry at YouTube and we'll get into that, but we're self policing and It's important to talk about this stuff and people are very angry and very upset and they should be and they should be talking about it. Uh, There's a lot of sketchy stuff going on and I want to talk a little bit about Logan and what I think about his current situation and there's just so much to talk about here that I'm like, I don't, yeah, I don't even know where to start. All right. You know, I think I agree. I think it's it's a little overwhelming just thinking about the whole situation. But I want to first just touch on a couple things. Uh, I think we should go from like the initial reaction we had yeah. to kind of seeing where it went in terms of like how YouTube dealt with it and, and the, like the, the way it played out because of what YouTube did mm-hmm. or didn't do for that matter. And then moving forward, like what we think of the situation as it stands today. Yeah. To be perfectly honest, I – I I try not to like consume too many like vlogs and that's different than it used to be for me because when I started vlogging and I was early in vlogging, I felt like that was like doing homework. And that's something Jenna, you know, gave me a lot of insight to when I started making YouTube videos. Like you got to know what's out there. It's, it's doing your homework to know the landscape of what type of video you're making. So initially I watched a lot of vlogs and it helped me a lot, even just to know what I didn't want to make. Um, but it, it just gives you an idea of what the landscape of that type of video looks like, which is so important. If you're going to be a creator, you need to be educated on your field. Um, that doesn't, that's not the same anymore. I don't watch pretty much any vlog ever. And a big reason for that is because I feel like the, the idea of vlogging has become so, um, centered around shocking people for the sake of a video, a thumbnail and a couple views, but then forgetting what that means for real life. And those two are so separated nowadays in vlogs. Um, you see the shock factor. You see running around, man on the street type of stuff. You see like a lot of really annoying stuff. You know, there's there's a lot of good vlogs out there. But there's also a lot of shit that um, I just really – I don't really want to consume. And I think it's because it makes me feel like I'm watching something that didn't really need to be created for that stupid vlog because of, of what what it required to happen in life. And I think this this video that Logan made is a, is a prime example of that. Um, my initial reaction to the video was like, wow, I can't believe that I clicked on this video that's titled We Found a Dead Body in the Japanese Suicide Forest, and then I actually saw that, pretty much all of it. You know, the, the blurred face really didn't do anything. Um, and what got to me the most, like Jenna had said, you know, you've watched, you've watched Dateline, you've, you were on a murder trial, you 
you've been disturbed to a sense of uh, from seeing different aspects of death. For me, this was different than anything I've ever seen because of the fact that it was in a real vlog. And that's what I'm so familiar with. That medium is is like home to me. Um, I've vlogged for a lot of years now. Um, and I've even vlogged in Japan, which Jenna and I, I feel like we should definitely, you know, I feel like we should talk about that. But like, is that Kermit crying out there? Yeah, why don't you just let him in? He's going to cry. He needs a hug. I don't blame him. But yeah, I also want to talk about that because it's something that I thought about a lot. Because yeah. obviously there's videos that came out after uh, the original Suicide Forest video that We the Unicorns have put together a compilation of his other Japan vlogs that were all equally offensive. And a, a YouTuber rod named Rena Scully had made a really good video talking about how his whole attitude towards their culture, towards their country... It's like it reminded her – I'm not speaking for her. Like I want you to watch her video so you can hear it in her words. But like it reminded her of the way that she and her family were treated by other people because she was foreign and they think she's so cute and they talk down to her. It's like Logan sort of treated a lot of Japan like a cartoon culture and had almost no respect for them as people – which is why he was able to film someone who had taken their own life and f seemingly felt almost nothing. And I don't want to, I don't really feel like getting into the conversation of his body language and the laughing and whatever. No, 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 no. no. It was, it was disrespectful. <clears throat> and, and other YouTubers have pointed out that, yeah, your content is like, we're going to the suicide forest, but like, there's definitely a kernel in there where he's like, I hope we find a dead body or I hope while we're sleeping over in this forest, someone comes in here to kill themselves and we, the low gang, dab, 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 can sit down and talk them out of it. You know, what a great video. And, and send wanna, a message I out wanna, to him. Yeah. yeah. I want to talk about some of that in a little bit, but like the, the, the Japan thing that, is like, it is, you and I are both Americans that have gone to Japan yeah. as I'm sure a lot of you are, or I don't know, whatever it is. I, it's so difficult to go to Japan and Tokyo in particular and not be overwhelmed by the sense of respect that is just everywhere in everything it's everywhere you go it's, it's i would before i saw that video i would almost say it's impossible to go there as an american with our american values and our american culture and not be affected by it in a positive way like it it's really hard to go there and, and just be like fuck this fuck everything whatever it's so powerful to sit with the way that they think they do things differently in terms of respect than us it's so admirable that those parts of their their society their culture are so moving for uh, um, us as americans where it's all like me driven independent driven like me before everybody else i'll do whatever i want fuck everybody this like you can get a white picket fence. You can reach for the stars. The The limits are endless for you as a person. And to go there and it's so difficult to not be moved by that. How they treat their belongings, how they treat other people, how they treat children, how they treat people on a train. It's like their food. The, the, I don't the issue, know. The issue for me when, when the Unicorns video came out showing the rest of the vlogs in Japan, which by the way, all it took – for them to make that video was literally watching his other vlogs, which which makes you wonder, and it begs the question, which I'm not going to waste my fucking time, but it begs the question, how many vlogs did this guy make going around doing God knows what, God knows where, and disrespect the fuck out of something that you might really feel like annoyed by? And annoyed to the point where like, wow, that's embarrassing that that guy does what I do, or that guy's embarrassing because he's from my country, or that guy's embarrassing because um, he's... He's just a downright, you know, disrespectful person, whatever. My problem is if if I'm sitting here and I have never traveled to Japan, all I've seen from Japan are things on TV, YouTube, the internet, whatever. I've heard of how it is there. I've watched movies. I've met people who lived there, this and that. But I've never been to Japan. And I watched that video. I'm like, wow, that's that's pretty fucked up. Like, I feel like that's really disrespectful and that makes me angry. But like Jenna said, like you just said, the fact that we were there and we got to feel every single day that we were there, we got to feel like that respect and that culture shock in the most positive, life-changing way every day we were there, wherever we went, whoever we talked to, walking around at 3 a.m., watching 
literally, like we walked down a street at 3 a.m. in Japan and not only was it like silent to the point where you can hear a mouse run down the street, but there were bikes leaned up against houses, not locked up. No one, no one's, there's no stealing all, you know, all over the place there. You, there's umbrellas that people take from certain establishments, use them and drop them at other, other establishments and no one steals them. That's why that system works. The cabs are pristine clean. We met a cab driver who spent his entire day, the day before he picked us up, trying to find a guy who left his wallet in his cab. Like everyone who we had met and every place we had gone to, we just felt like a conflicting feeling of like, damn, America can be really like, really disrespectful. And like, I didn't even think of this. Like, I didn't even think of a society that existed like this in today, in today's, you know, time and age. And then we go home and we're like, wow. Like, and I mean, culture shock because we had, we had never, I mean, personally, I had never given the thought that a place like that with people who respected each other, who were complete strangers and respected just the well-being of the community and cleanliness and peace existed today. Yeah. Like that seems like a utopian kind of fake idea until you go to Japan and then you see it. And so for that to be our experience in Japan and something that like we'll never forget. Right. We've talked about that long before this video came out. We'll never forget our trip to Japan. For that to be our experience and then see the Logan video, it's just – there's no words. It's It's like – it's the like we we misstep a little bit in Japan on accident. Like we say the wrong thing or we accidentally, you know, we feel horrible. So for that video to come out, it's like, holy shit. But, dude. I mean, yes. And I agree with you on all of those things. And I want to clarify that, like, as YouTubers ourselves, you know, we're not in a position to demonize someone else for making something or, you know, we've made mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. And I, I've seen people defending Logan as this video was a mistake. He apologized for it. Uh, and I've also seen a lot of you guys comparing my fish apology vid video to his apology. I laugh. It makes me laugh. Okay. You guys are funny, but like, I, I just think it's the difference between how, how someone handles a bad decision you know, like the length of time, I don't think has anything to do with it. I, for my apology video, I was, I was sitting with the fact, I think a lot of people miss the point of that and continue to miss the point of that. But I, I was sitting with the fact that I'm a vegan and I care about animals and I put animals in a place where they shouldn't have been. And I was sitting with that guilt and the guilt was overwhelming. And if someone, you know, genuinely feels bad for something that they've done, I think you can tell. You know, it doesn't need to be a big, long thing or a drawn out thing. And I think a lot of people are upset because they can't, they aren't convinced or they can't fully tell if Logan feels bad for what he did or if what he did he thinks is even wrong. Because if you're going to play the other side of this, there are lots of other YouTube videos in the Japanese suicide forest, going around Tokyo or other countries or other places being really disrespectful and annoying. I mean, just look at Jackass. This is their whole thing for years and years and years. How loud and obnoxious can we be? You know? So it's not that I'm so everywhere. I mean, he's gained, however, over a million subscribers since then. Probably, yeah, I think. He's not losing subscribers. Go. Go. So it's important to talk about and I think even like when I was a younger person, you know, I listened to questionable music. I listened to or watched questionable things. My mom would let me do stuff like that. And I understand there are a lot of kids and a lot of people that look up to Logan and like Logan a lot. And what he did was not okay. And what YouTube is doing is not okay. And I feel like what was important about what my mom taught me was you get to decide whether or not you like them, you know, having a conversation with kids. And it's not if you're a parent, because I'm not a parent. I don't have a kid. I'm not telling you how to parent. But like your younger sisters, your cousins, your brothers, you know, your neighbors, talking to them about it and helping them understand that you can really enjoy someone a lot. Maybe they just like the fact that he's entertaining and a, uh, just a young guy, you know, you don't have to get it. But what you do have to get is that that person is not infallible and they do make mistakes and then it's okay to call them out on it. You know what I mean? I think that that's the role of the YouTube community here is that because YouTube is not doing abs like anything at all. It's up to us. It's up to people on the on the platform. And, and this clearly has not hurt him in any way, shape or form. 
It's how, important to talk about it. It's important to talk about with with your like little family members, your little friends that are Logan Paul fans. You don't. I don't think it's a it's an effective strategy. Like for example, I liked Corn and like Marilyn Manson and like Prodigy growing up. Stuff that would just make your parent be like, "Oh my God, are, are you okay? Like, are you going to be okay when you grow up? I'm yeah. worried about you." Because yeah. some of it's really not okay for a 14 year old. I get it. But my mom would always let us listen to whatever music we liked. She would talk to us about what was in in the song, what was in the show, or like, you know that that this part of that is not okay, and that you know they're expressing some of the like it's art in music or maybe in film or in television, but it's still important to have the conversation with your kid. And I think maybe a lot of people, a lot of parents, a lot of friends would be like, you can't watch that. You, you, turn it off. It's fucking trash. Logan Paul is trash. Fucking cut it out. <clears throat> but maybe an important strategy here is. Just have a Be conversation. Well, because clearly people are going to continue watching him. Is to just have a conversation with the younger people in your life that you can you can really enjoy someone as an actor, a musician, whatever. But if they do something that crosses the line, you have to let them know and, and you 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 decide as a person what your values are. Does that does that align with your values? And it's not just your kid on their iPad or on their phone checking out YouTubers. Like, the, 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 that's what scares me the most is the, the way parents kind of generalize. Like, okay, they're on the internet. They're just watching their YouTuber. It's not funny not, anymore. But they're not paying attention to what that is. And right. in fact, they're not only not paying attention, but like in the case of when like kids are going to Jake Paul's house and the parents were there with them, that's that's how fucking far removed these people are from reality and scruples and right. morals is the fact that they, they're like, yeah, yeah. You know, I imagine their conversation with friends like, yeah, yeah, no, we're, I'm going to take my my fucking son to his, this thing with a YouTuber and then I'll meet you later. Not knowing what the fuck is going on. Yeah, not having not... any fucking clue that that's, that's a reality for that person, you know, regardless of how that situation played out. But really quick, there was so many tweets going around. Uh, like the ones, you know, referring to suicide hotlines and if you need help talk, you know, so many tweets that were being highly retweeted when this whole video initially dropped. And one tweet that stuck out to me was, hey, really quickly, parents who are on Twitter, there is a video going around right now that your kid probably is going to see or has seen. Yeah. Maybe consider having a talk with them, which is such like a, you know, uh, an oversight to most people. But it's like, that's the reality of this. It's like, this is not just another YouTube video in the sub box. Like, you parents need to wake up. And I think the parent thing is such a good, like a good point. But it's like, this, this is so, and that's what. That's the gravity of the situation. That's what sucks so much. But it's also like a good – it's a good note to for parents to be like, okay, well, this is not just – I don't know. It's like YouTube is not YouTube is not family-friendly. Like you can't just assume that everything on there is going to be peaches when in fact this could do real damage and probably already has done a lot of real yeah, damage to kids. I, well, I mean I think the important thing is we see this all the time at meet and greets. We hear this all the time, just on the street, just wherever, when we meet parents and they go, yeah, I have no clue who you are, but my kid loves you. So, you know, it's great. And you see interviews with parents waiting in line for Jake Paul's house, for example, which is a petting zoo back whenever. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, I don't know who the kid is, but like my daughters love him. So like I'll do anything for them. It's not cute. It's not funny. It's not okay. And you're not being a good parent. Yeah, for you to not know what your kids are into. I'm not – and again, I'm bringing it back to the point that I made about the way that my mom parented me, which is I'm not saying you should dictate what they can and can't listen to. You and I know just as well that if there's something you're not allowed to see, you're going to eventually find a way to see it because you're a little shit kid and you find out how to watch things you're not allowed to watch. You know what I mean? Rated R movies and whatever. You'll sneak into a movie theater. Kids are going to figure out how to watch it by telling them, don't watch that person. He's trash. I'm not sure it's an effective strategy, but a conversation is an effective strategy. And it's, it pisses me off that I've seen a couple of videos of parents being like, I'm having a conversation with my, my son about this. And or my daughter or my younger sister or cousin, you know, because them just being blind to it maybe doesn't help them either. There's a there's a level of decision making that I think is really important for young people to have when they decide what they want to watch and not watch. And it shouldn't always be at their parents discretion. Like, I, d I do think it's important for a 13 year old to be like, I liked Logan Paul, but I don't think I like him anymore, you know. And to have a talk with a caring adult 
that says, well, why do you feel that way? Well, because the alternative is they go into their fandom Twitter DM group and they encourage each other about how Logan made a mistake and everyone's an idiot for criticizing him. And then all of a sudden they're back in that warped kind of world where they don't have any input from reality or any parental advice on any of this or even just like someone to talk to who's not like a Logan, right? right? Like, I don't know. That's think, what, we're, in the, we're in the age of social media, right? Where our parents... Where like, you know, if you listen to Madonna, there's so much sexual stuff in there, you can't listen to that. I mean, that, that only gets you so far. But you're in a, a time and space where everyone theoretically has a voice and can use it. I think it's important to teach your kids like this person is literally no different than you. They are on a democratized platform. If they're doing something that you don't think is right, it doesn't matter if you're 11. You're, you should feel that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're entitled to feel that way. You're important and you matter in this space, you know? Mm -hmm. Whereas in years ago, it was like they can just get away with ignorant, racist, annoying shit for years until someone made a big enough stink about it to get it off the air. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Everyone anymore. has opinion. Everyone has an equal opinion now. And I don't know, honestly, it's like one of the most intimidating parts of this whole issue is – is watching like the the fallout from his fans and like seeing how I despite the fact that he like even in his apology video was like don't defend me you like you see the I mean I've I've looked around and I've seen some really weird fucked up like it scares me how mindless people are in how they in how they follow who they follow and how little they think about things just objectively every once in a while and I think such an important part of growing up is like teaching yourself a moral compass, so to speak. And like you develop a moral compass from y your surroundings, the people you meet, your teachers, your peers. But teaching yourself your own version of it is such an important thing in growing up into an adult or in a young adult. And the, a, a huge problem with YouTubers and YouTubers like Logan Paul who have these massive followings. And again, you're not responsible for what every fan of yours does. But the problem is like, it just really discourages the idea of like, let's objectively think about what's right and what's wrong for a second. There's so much groupthink happening that it's almost like a lost cause yeah. to try to weigh what what is a good thing and what's a bad thing. Because if the person who you like did it, that discussion isn't happening with yeah. anyone. Well, I mean, one of the things that I also wanted to talk about this before we get into all the YouTube responsibilities. Yeah, stuff, we can do a little break before the YouTube yeah, thing. Yeah, is is sort of along the lines of what you just said. And I feel like I have a couple of things that I would say to Logan directly. First first of which is I want to be careful. You know, we're talking openly and honestly about this topic, as a lot of people are on the internet. But I want to be careful about the mob mentality and the demonizing someone. You know, what I think he did was it's really irresponsible, really insensitive, and really terrible. And he should be criticized for it. But I do – I don't want to contribute to the the mob mentality. Well, it's just not productive at this point. No, it's not. But but talking about it is productive. Yeah. And we know that that makes real change on the internet. Yeah, having a conversation. I agree. Another thing that I want to talk about is that we do know from experience and from the experience of other – YouTubers or content creators is that your job is very unique, especially if your job is to share your life every single day. The monotony of that is just mind blowing where you're, I know a lot of you aspire to be vloggers and you do it and you want to do it. And everybody sort of hits the same wall of like, I'm only one person and life is relatively boring when you're living it. And, you know, a lot of it is filled with you entertaining yourself by watching something else or playing a game or talking with your friends or petting your dog or going for a walk. Silent. I'm asleep right now. And it gets very difficult to entertain people with you only being yourself. So I get the path for a lot of vloggers turns into this, all right, well, let's start structuring in some vacations, some trips. Let's travel. Let's go places. Let's do things. Let's structure in activities during the day so that we can have some in theory content. content. Yeah. And if there wasn't already people that have been doing this for years, if this was like the first time that a vlogger has done something over the top and people are upset about it, I'd be like, 
okay? But unfortunately for Logan and Jake, even Jake, there's plenty to talk about with Jake, but like there's been a decade of people that have come before you that have made open and honest vlogs about their struggles and how it has ruined their lives, their relationships, uh, their financial situations, a lot of their friendships, their businesses. It's destroyed a lot for them because they've put their their entertainment first. And I think that this vlog in the Japanese suicide forest was a perfect example of someone who has been putting entertainment first so much that they have forgotten how to be a person, right? Like if you're running any other business, people comes first. You need to have good people. If you're working with a bad person or bad people, it doesn't matter how great it is, what, what it is that you're making or whatever, you have bad people around you. People first in the sense that like you're putting yourself first, your morals first, He's completely lost track of everything that's not content, you know, because if people came first, he, you would get yourself in that situation and be like, oh, my God, this is not content. This is not OK, you know, but he's in the, the actual thick of that where it's like everything is content and I have now lost myself as a person. And I know we we hear about these stories of people who have sold their soul to the devil for fame and success and blah, blah, blah. If that's just, a, if you took that as a loose interpretation, something like this is an example of that. You have forgotten who you are as a person or what even makes a human being a human being. That a person that has committed suicide, that is hanging from a tree, is still a person and not content. That is sort of, in my definition, you have now sold your soul. You are no longer a person. You are doing everything for your job, your entertainment, your money, whether or not you monetize the video or not, because I don't, I don't care about those details about how he hadn't monetized it and it just didn't get taken down and YouTube, YouTube put it on trending. It's content. You have put in, you've put your job, your entertainment, everything in front of just being a good person. That, that to me is the definition of selling your soul. You're, you, there's nothing in there anymore. And I will tell you that, you know, his channel is growing. So I don't, I'm trying my best not to do this like bandwagon slam fest. And I did, someone was like, you defended Logan Paul in the, in the other podcast. And I'm, I'm not sure that I did. I'm, I, I talked about how my personal interactions with him had gone and that he was professional. He was on time. He had reached out to me years ago when he wanted to drop out of school to pursue YouTube and ask my thoughts on it. I'm an education pusher. I, of course, was like, I think you should stay in school, but you should ultimately do what's right with you. I'm not sure how that's offending someone, but I take your criticism. But like, uh, for all of this, I, I just, I don't know. I, it, well, he's lost himself <clears throat> as a person well, in his job. And you, I will tell you how difficult it is. You, you have lost the respect of the community. And yes, your channel is growing. And yes, you're doing well. And people will continue to watch you. But when, I don't, I think people vastly underestimate just how difficult it is to remain in any industry when you have lost the respect of your peers and colleagues. It's really hard. And we do have some control and that people don't fuck with you anymore. You know, people aren't going to work with you anymore. People aren't going to hang out with you anymore. And I know you're a maverick and a lone wolf and you think you can do everything by yourself because you're a 22-year-old kid who's on a rocket ship and thinks nothing can stop them. That's not true. It is so incredibly difficult to exist in a space where nobody has your back. And that is incredibly isolating and lonely. I think we've seen that a number of times within the YouTube community. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think, I think that's a really good point. The the idea of someone like being detached with reality because of how far gone they are down this hole of like uh, being making content all the time and and being the most trending and being edgy and making shocking things and um, having a brand that's bigger than anything in the world, right? And I think the choices he made that in order to have documented what he documented and posted what he's posted and reacted how he reacted, those choices were all, like you said, blinded completely by numbers and ego and and his own brand and trending and this and that. But I don't think it's that, like, I, I think that's such a good point. 
And you can relate it to the before and the after as well. Like if you look at the the videos of him running around disrespecting the fuck out of everything and everyone and him in that foreign country that is all about respect, all of all of what he was thinking wasn't like, I want to go be an asshole. It's I want content. Mm -hmm. I want to make shocking shit. I want my buddies to film it. I want to be funny. I want to see a ton of fucking comments telling me how funny and entertaining this was. I want it to trend. I want a million views. I want a billion views, whatever. That's all that was on his mind. It's not like Logan is like this horrible, evil man who's going around doing these He's things. He's lost. He's lost. He's just completely clouded by this idea that he needs to be number one at whatever the fuck he's trying to be number one at, which in the internet age, it's so goddamn convoluted now. It's like, I mean, what what is even the goal, right? Like, you, you, what, could, what more could you want, right? But it, I, I want to relate what you said in addition to before, the after. And the after, meaning the apology video that he made, because it really was – one of the most infuriating parts of this whole thing for me because it was so rehearsed and so bad and so disingenuous to me. This is my opinion. Like you could have had any different reaction to that apology video. But for me, it's like he wakes up, whoever his people are, whatever, might have told him, hey, that tweet you sent out wasn't received well. We need to make a real video. Let's time, let's address it. I need you to be like, let's be real genuine. Let's let's apologize, this and that. And Logan being the actor that he is because he is an actor – this is not my words. Those are, you know, he, that's what he wants to do. He's acted in movies before. That's his like thing. It felt like I was watching a stupid audition for some sort of drama scene in some movie with that apology video. It, it, there was no, there was no like pauses. There was no ums. There was no uhs. There was no, uh, you know, like it was all just like calculated scripts with him like Looking at – it was just – oh, I mean I can't even tell you how uncomfortable I was watching that apology video. And then after it was over, I felt like no one was sorry. I just felt like it was just another piece of this whole puzzle mm -hmm. that he added onto his channel. And that's another – like it would have been different if he had done the shit he had done, waited a couple days, gone on camera, made a really messy kind of all over the place but like in some way genuine apology where he wasn't – he wasn't well spoken. He wasn't well lit. He wasn't. I don't know. I don't know anything about the video being genuine. He could have really just conveyed at least ten percent of me that he was that he was sorry, and it would have made me feel like okay, he's he might be waking up as a person. This whole thing might have woken him up. But the sad thing for me is it felt like a three part series where all three parts he's still not a person. Mm -hmm. He's still lost in that world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. Absolutely. Uh, there's nothing worse than a bad apology. Like, <laughs> you're not sorry, you know? Sorry why you why got, did you waste our you're time? Sorry you got that this? reaction. And... Yeah, you're not sorry. And I, I between <clears throat> Jake and Logan, when all the things, you know, shit hits the fan with the two of them and they feel the need to half ass apologize or whatever, like, you don't have our respect. It's It's as simple as that. And if you want it, like you, you need to just stop with the one up itis. Like the, the next thing we're going to do is bigger and better than ever. And I, I can relate to some of like almost nothing of what they're doing, but like some of the internal attitude attitude, because I do feel like part of my younger self and my career was playing a little bit of a character and a, you know, an extension of myself. It's not a lie. But some of it is like a little more turned up than I would usually be, which is an inc like we've had this incredible outlet with the podcast, with live streams and stuff, even vlogs where like you don't constantly feel this pressure to be this certain person 24 seven. And I see a lot of that in both Jake and Logan, especially Logan right now. When you look back at some of his vlogs and what he's doing there, he, you can tell that he is trapped in this box of I need to be over the top and entertaining. And if I am not that then I'm not going to have an audience and people aren't going to care. Maybe, maybe that would happen. But I will tell you from experience, as I'm sure a lot of other people would, you have everyone's attention. You've already done the most difficult thing in the world, which is like, not, not in audience. the world. But yeah, just people vastly underestimate how difficult it is just to get people to care yeah. about what you're posting or what you have to say or what you're doing. You've already done all of that. You can, it is okay to let go of this like act of, oh my God, this is so crazy. Let's go do something fucking crazy and nuts and entertaining. You know what's fine? It's just being your normal self. People are already interested in you. 
And this this is like something in psychology that I think will always stick with me forever. It's like when you're working with another person, the, the rule number one is do no harm. Do no harm by the other person. Like you can, you can, it's up to you and your liberties if you want to disclose things, how you want to work with them, how you want to talk to them, what you think works. But rule number one is do no harm, you know? And I think that these vlogs with the, we're just silly and crazy and out of our mind, we're mavericks, may be fine. But if rule number one is do no harm, then like 10 minutes of your 1001 vlog doesn't exist, you know? Yeah. If if you're just thinking about maybe you weren't in this position, you didn't you didn't get into this because you wanted young kids to look up to you, or you didn't think that this would be your audience, and now you're put in this position, fine, whatever, I don't care. But at, you're at this point, you now have 15 million people that watch your YouTube channel. Do no harm, and really think about it, and really sit with it. And when people critique your apology, when people critique what you've done in your vlogs, listen to them. Don't just dab on them and say that they're fucking haters. Actually listen to them, internalize them, think about them, do things differently in the future. Like, I, I'm not looking for Jake or Logan or either of them to just grovel for 10 years and say how sorry they are. No one, we, no one I don't, wants we don't that. want that. Yeah. We want to see you grow up and learn and change. You know, and have more of a connection with reality and right. what you're putting out on the Because internet. clearly, YouTube's not going to shut down either of their channels, they're not going to stop any of it. And kids aren't going to stop watching them. Their channels are, are only continuing to grow. So what we want, and I think what might do well to start back on the on the trail of earning your colleagues' respect here is to show some growth and stop. Maybe every once in a while, take a break from being a fucking jackass on a street in a foreign country and just be yourself. I think people, you and your brother will find it incredibly liberating to just be yourself for a little while and not some over-the-top character. And mind you, while all of this was going down, there was a leaked video of Jake Paul saying the N-word. And that whole, <laughs> the video of him saying, I lost my virginity with a thumbnail of Erica Costell sitting on him, just like almost ass fucking naked. And those things are like almost non-news because at this point, no one even cares that you just fucking said the N-word. Do you understand how little respect people have for you that when you, you get caught saying the N-word openly, out loud, on tape. And people are people just like- People almost have nothing to say yeah, about it. It's not even a, it's not even a news piece. Nothing to say about it. To the point where we, we don't respect you enough to even fucking care. Or be angry, or be upset, or have anything to say. It's 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 a no it's a no brainer to me. Like yeah, but it is important. You're a very 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 different person than they are or ever will be, and you now and you ten years ago are different than they are or ever will be. Like you're just a completely different human. And I right. I want to speak to that really quickly. Just that like I've never played a character, so to speak, on YouTube. Like you know, I've I've made vlogs and I think my vlogs have evolved and I've been a little bit different and things have whatever. But the idea that it's, it's liberating to just kind of be yourself for a living and not feel like you need to embellish and be over the top. I think that can only resonate so much with a person who is so, and I don't want to say business minded, but I mean like competitive in the, in the world of like, I want to be, I would just say ego driven, like egocentric. I want to be number one online. I want to be the, 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 this and that, which which you watch them anytime you hear them talk, like when Jake Paul went on the H three podcast, the things he was talking about and like his goals is like I want to be a, the the billionaire and I want to own the. It's like all they want is this like one thing that they want that's really important for them is just being so big in the world of like money and power and what they've created and where they've come from and this and that. When in reality, it's like, okay, but before all of that, before all of your accomplishments and everything you've done online and all your views and the numbers and money, like before all of that, don't forget that you need to be a goddamn human being to other human beings, which is so easy to get lost in that train of thought. And I, again, I can't identify with that train of thought and neither can you. So you to can- me that, To me, that says everything about a person. Yeah. When, they, when people would ask me, what do you want to be in five years? I'm like, I don't know. 
I didn't know what I was doing five years ago. I, I'm, for one, don't even want long-term goals. And even if I did, there's vague things like, I would like to be happy. Or I'd like to not say goodbye to my dogs. was my only tangible goal when I was about 21 years old. I want to live a life someday where I don't have to say goodbye to my dogs like 24-7. That's what I want for my future. And I'm living that and I'm living the dream. But I don't, I, I just cannot relate to someone whose goals are like, I want a billion dollars. Okay, well then guess what? That kind of person who has no other kind of goals other than being the biggest, the best, the most rich, it, that says everything I need to know about you. 100%. Because you are willing to do all of the gross, disgusting things that not all the time, but oftentimes go, goes into being that person. Which makes that human a, a person who's prone to just being a right. bad person to other people. Right. And I want to say, like, everything you're saying I personally agree with I think is sound. And I think... It's good advice for anyone to listen to who's lost and needs advice. But at the same time, you need to remember that you're not that person. And as much as you don't identify with that, they might not identify with you, mm -hmm. a person whose goal is to just make money and be powerful. Right. Like all of those people who have those goals are not all bad people, not but at they, all. Are, they are a lot of times very prone to being less of a humanitarian and a, and a, and a friendly neighbor to the, the average person. Or who, having any kind of balance. Or a moral life. compass because you have such, you such blinders on. And I, and I, I think you made a great point, but it's, it's just important to remember that a lot of people who have those goals or are, are, are wired like that. They may see no value in what you just said. And there's not really a Absolutely. tangible problem with that, which Absolutely. is. And well, here's my thing. So I feel like I know a lot of adults like this, and I've known a lot of people like this in my whole life. Jake Paul and Logan Paul are both young men. Uh, they're very driven. They're very excited for their careers. Yeah, they've made a lot of mistakes, and I guess we're going down the road of which is worse and worse and worse, and we're watching from the outside, and it's we see the harm that it is causing. <clears throat> but it's it's somehow admirable for a 22-year-old to be so hungry to achieve their dreams and success. Like young kids see him as a success story. They're inspired by him. They're inspired. He's so hardworking. They're inspired by his mansion. To me as an adult, and when I see other adults like this, there's nothing admirable to me about your work ethic to where you have no friends, no relationship, nothing in your life other than your job. It's easy to throw yourself into a job and forget that other human beings exist. That to me is selfish, fine, do whatever you want to do. But I know a lot of people who become lawyers, doctors, and they just forget about everybody else. Good for you. You've done so great in your career. But what's what I think is impressive in someone is who can balance things, you know? People who have kids and a boyfriend or girlfriend or friends that they like to take care of, parents that they like to check in on. You know, like there's nothing admirable to me about burying your head into your work and just denying that the rest of the world exists. And that's why I feel like this is sort of going down. This like career before everything. And you do see the people in the wake, in the fallout, making these exposed videos about Jake and Logan being like, yeah, dude, I was part of Team 10. And like, dude, he he actually was like kind of a dick to me and like not nice. And, you know, a lot of it sounds like it's coming between like money and business is sort of ruining his interpersonal relationships. Not surprised at all because it sounds like someone who was so focused you have on a money. Track mind. And guess what? If yeah. all you want in life is money, you'll get it. And you won't get anything fucking else. You won't be happy. You'll be fucking miserable. It doesn't matter. If you're not happy before you have money, you're not going to be happy after you get money. You will never be happy. And the people around you will never be happy. You'll be miserable on the inside. So go... I, I, I think... Kids are allowed to decide whatever they want and like. And I hope that they see some of the, the, I don't know, the difference between something that is truly admirable and something that's not. I, I agree. I agree. And I think the narrative of YouTubers telling their audience in the world how fucking hard they work is just so exhausted by now. I'm so fucking, yeah, it's a snooze fest. And every, you know, everyone who does that and will relentlessly tweet about their grind and their schedule and all the work. I mean, just first of all, just shut, shut the fuck up. First and of second, all, of all, second of all, second of all, the work that's really being done that really fucking matters to the world is the work that you're not fucking tweeting about 24 seven. Okay. So even if you're not like Jenna and you don't, and, and you, you may have like, uh, you know, I, 
I believe in hard work and that's all that matters and jobs is all that matters. Maybe you believe, maybe that's what you think and maybe that's how you live your life and that's totally fucking fine. But I think even you, that person, will agree with me when I say, maybe just fucking do it and stop talking about it and stop yeah. preaching to people of how lazy they are and how bad their work ethic yeah, is ever, and how yeah. you set yourself apart <laughs> from the world by your grind. Shut up. Just do it. Just there's no like what you're doing is such a step backwards, 10 step backwards for any hard work that you might have actually done, which I don't even know if you have because all I see yeah. is you tweeting about it and posting these videos where you're like, we're have taking Have you ever the been world. part of a sports team? Like, have you ever actually been on a, a team of people or is it always just you? Because the person on your sports team that acted like that didn't get very far. If they're just like hustle and grind and everyone else around me is lazy. No. Who was your most admirable teammate? The one you could depend on that would just do shit and not fucking say shit. That is the person that you want to be. I don't know. I feel like when I was a kid, I had a, a lot of people that I liked, celebrities that I liked, celebrities I had a crush on. But all of my role models were like tangible people that like did something that I found admirable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or even now as an adult, it's not like I idolize you know, someone who's untouchable in terms of talent or wealth or, you know, it's it's somebody like fucking Joe Rogan, man. Like, I, I like Seth MacFarlane or like, I like my mom. I'd like to be my mom when I grow up. You know, yeah. someone who you're like, this is why I like them. And it has nothing to do with them being good looking or wealthy. Or or grind or grinding every day. I think I think now's a good point where I just okay, I want to talk about some meandies real quick. Oh hell yeah! Because when you're frustrated and you're annoyed and you're seeing bullshit you're all over the internet and you're sweaty, I'm you sweating. just need some soft, goddamn undies. And meandies has you covered, guys. It's made from a sustainably sourced natural soft fabric that's three times softer than cotton. And I say this every time: if you've never felt the meandies in person, three times softer than cotton sounds good, but you're like, I don't know, what does that really mean? Once you touch the meandies, once you put them on your bum you understand right away how much of a difference that is. MeUndies are so fucking comfortable. I literally wear them every single day and they, they don't wear down. They are incredibly made. They have really cool designs on it just to top it all off. Like Three pizza. times softer than cotton. I mean, ridiculously soft. Okay, guys, you're allowed to switch between membership plans, cancel or skip a month at any time. Right now, MeUndies has an exclusive offer just for the Dink fam. Guys, until January 20th, you get 20% off your membership and free shipping. That's 20% 20 off an already discounted membership. Okay, and MeUndies is social that you'll love their underwear, that even 100% satisfaction guarantee is, is yours. Okay, if you don't like them for whatever reason and you're crazy, you can send it back and they'll refund you for your full purchase. Right now, go to MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian. That's MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian to get that deal. You will not be sorry. I'm telling you. Just try it. Also, guys, Tracker, a wonderful sponsor of the podcast. Guys, stop losing your stuff. I know you're losing your stop stuff. It. Put the tiny Tracker pixel on your keychain, on your on the back of your phone, on your book bag, on your laptop case, like things that you really can't be losing. Just put them in there. That's all it is. Then you have the peace of mind wherever you go that if you lose that item, you have a Tracker pixel in there with you, okay? It's the Bluetooth tracking device that links to their app on your phone where you can GPS locate every Tracker that you have on your stuff and you can label them. So for instance, I have my drone tracked, I have my camera bag tracked. So if I ever want to see where I am when I'm traveling and I see where my bags are, they're slow on the turnstile. Like, where are they? Oh, they're at LAX. Okay, I'm good. It's just peace of mind. That's all it is. Okay. And it's tiny. It's a really like inconspicuous, great thing that you can even play a noise. So it, if you're losing it in the house, you can play a noise on it. It'll, it'll ring in the other room. You find it right away. Really awesome. Guys, right now, you can get tracker when you can get 20% off your order when you go to the tracker. That's T H E T R A C K R dot com slash Jenna Julian. That's 20% off your order. An already really, really fair priced item that you're just you're just not gonna be sorry for. It's an investment you're you're gonna make and then realize you need to make. And lastly, guys, if you're looking for an awesome new toothbrush, but you don't want to spend a ton of money, Quip has you covered. Okay. It's an electric toothbrush that looks like it was designed by Apple. It's really sleek, it's minimalist, it's beautiful. Um, and it packs the right amount of vibrations into an ultra slim design with guided pulses to simplify better brushing at a fraction of the cost. And I'm telling you, like you look, you go down that section at the drugstore with the toothbrush. It's insanely expensive nowadays. Insane. They're behind plastic. You can't even get them yourself. You can't. Yeah. You have to call <laughs> the attendant to come over and lock it because it's such anyway. Okay. There's no cluttering up your bathroom. The, the quip comes with a little mount that goes right on your mirror and it also doubles as a travel cover. So you can mount it. It's not on your counter. It's beautifully like, it's just simple. It's easy. Okay. 
And right now, Quip offers a, an optional subscription plan delivering new toothbrush heads on a dentist recommended three month schedule for just five dollars, including free shipping worldwide. And you get your first refill free when you go to get quip. That's G E T Q U I P dot com slash Jenna Julian. And you get your first refill pack for free. Check it out. You will not be sorry. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. <clears throat> okay. So I think it would be easy to kind of go all day, but I think we should finish with YouTube. And I know how angry you are about this, and I and I. This is such a hard podcast. This is, this is a difficult podcast. <laughs> this is a hard. Like I hope you guys know that we like this is this is hard. This is hard to talk about in in words that like you know people are just going to take weird and twist and you know be upset about no matter what you say. So uh, this is really hard. I'm, we're trying really hard. I'm trying hard. I know you are. You no, know, I know. And, and really quick, just so everyone who's under a rock knows, Logan's video with the dead body in it was on the trending page for a long time. And it was there until Logan himself took the video down. YouTube did not remove it. Then his apology video lived on the trending page for about two and a half days, mm-hmm. right? Gained about 20 million views. Whether it was monetized or not, I don't, I don't even think we need to go in that. Like, who the fuck knows? Personally, I don't really fucking think it matters at all. You know, monetizing a video, by the way, isn't the only way to benefit from that video being online and being shared. He has gained like he gained like eighty thousand subscribers in one day last week, mm-hmm. and he's it, the views and the the. My point is monetizing a video just because someone doesn't monetize a video or there's no ads on a video doesn't make them a saint for for that, okay? Like the video is still being shared. It's still being uploaded. There was still a choice to it. Anyway, back to the YouTube issue, which I think kind of revolves around the fact that what YouTube has been policing in the past year and a half, whatever, with all the demonetization and all the control over what they think is deemable – or is deemed uh, suitable for advertisers and what isn't has been such a hot topic recently. So the fact that they allowed this video to stay up, it's just a bit mind bending. I don't, I, I personally still don't understand how that happened. I don't understand how they haven't really even said anything about it. I also just think the cherry on top is the fact that his apology video trended for so long. Number one, like I just, the YouTube red golden boy, like, I don't know, man. I I don't know. I don't. I I think it, it is. It, it's, I don't know what to say. It's difficult to figure out words right now because I don't know. I don't know like what. I yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you a thousand percent. I think that's part of the reason why this podcast is really difficult to talk about because there's a lot of things that like need to be said but like can't fully say. Sort of say. Yeah. One thing I will say for sure though is that I'm I'm. I feel like I'm an air on the side of caution kind of person when it comes to, you know, a lot of the petitions that go around as soon as someone does something that they don't like, that it's like, shut this person's channel down. YouTube, if you don't shut their channel down, then you're, you know, you're saying that this is okay. And I would always like to err on the side of caution of like, I think that, you know, an appropriate thing is to take the video down, strike their channel, just like anybody else. Do I think that they need to be banished from the platform? I'm not sure. Although I know that there are other platforms that do do that, like Twitter. Twitter blocks people when they think that there's hate speech going on. They block a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, they do. And I think that there's pros and cons to both ways. Uh, but YouTube, I think, has has gone in a different way because it is a video sharing platform. And a lot of things fall under the category of video that are questionable obviously. So they try, it seems, to err on the side of caution to where they don't want to just be deleting people's channels, but they do have to sort of police what is on here and, you know, what's good for our advertisers and what isn't, but what borderlines on like freedom of speech and, you know, presenting maybe news or talking about LGBTQ plus topics and like, you know what I mean? Like they have a lot of stuff that sort of walks on this ethical line of like, should it be on YouTube or not? Yeah. You know, while still trying to keep the integrity of we want people to share in place. Yeah. And they they do seem to be 
almost jokingly fucking haha laissez faire. Like they love to just be this giant corporation with these elusive fucking rules and regulations and be like, we don't know. And no one to talk we to don't about know. it. Robotic answers everywhere. And there's there's pros and cons though, I feel like yeah. to them being so laissez faire. Mm-hmm. A lot of it I think is good and powerful because, you know, even even just Ten years ago, for for some of the content that's on there today, would it would be an outrage. Yeah. I can't believe you're letting these people share this stuff. I can't believe you're doing. You know, I think it's important to remain progressive in in that sense, and that like what's making people angry. Not that this suicide forest thing is a good example of that, uh, but you know what I'm saying is that I think that sharing is important, and it might not always be like the zeitgeist at the time for someone to share it. And I understand that people get outraged and they get this mob mentality and they want it to stop. And the answer is to shut that person's channel down. But that's why they have the strikes and stuff in place. And I, I feel like my position has almost always been, I agree that YouTube should remain as hands off as they can. You know, there's a, there's a lot of gray it's area. Not I'm not envy. I'm not envious of their job to try and decide what should and shouldn't be on YouTube. It's a fucking mess. Like, So you're saying like it's not their place to be determining contents. No, I'm saying that they stay hands off and my position has always been a little more conservative or like err on the side of caution rather than like free, anybody free that speech. does something that I don't like, delete they need to channel. delete their channel. Yeah, it like circles YouTube's back to like, job. yeah, it circles back to like the Sam Pepper thing when you're talking about people like delete his channel and you're like, no, like you can't just delete someone's. Or PewDiePie, or, PewDiePie or, you know, there's yeah. been a lot of different examples where people are like, you need to delete their channel. How dare you? And I've always been the one that's like, or been in the position of, I think we should err on the side of caution. Mm-hmm. Because then then once you start getting into that territory, then people are getting, you know, struck down by the hand of YouTube and mm-hmm. like, we don't know where it's coming from or why. Like, yep. I feel like some of the videos getting taken down, demonetized, like certainly a lot of people have a lot of questions and, you know, nothing is getting clarified. And certainly nothing has become more clear the more they explain things, which right now is nothing. Um, but I would rather have people being like, hey, YouTube, why is this video demonetized? Hey, YouTube, why did this video get taken down? Hey, YouTube, YouTube, why isn't this hitting some sub boxes rather than I'm not allowed to have a channel because I'm a controversial person. You know what I mean? Yeah. And well, I mean, to, to argue that point in so many ways, when, when, when certain channels are hit with relentless demonetization, they're kind of not able to have a channel. Right. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying is that I'm not envious of this, their responsibility to sort of try and sort out what we can monetize, what we can't, what's what's appropriate for this platform, what's not, you know, what's infringing on our terms of use, which are vague on purpose mm-hmm. so that they can sort of enforce them whenever they want to. Mm-hmm. I'm not envious of that job. I'm not envious of them deciding what this platform should be because there's a lot of responsibility. Like a lot of what Twitter does when they ban people is because they're using it for, you know, recruiting for terrorism groups. And Twitter's like, We can't have that. We have to delete this. So YouTube maybe doesn't have that problem because they've deemed all of that just inappropriate for the site. But then when we talk about it in the news, that also now is inappropriate. And then, what you know, it's really gray. It's really Uh, bizarre. uh. But instead of being like, hey, Philip DeFranco, you can't talk about the news. We're going to shut your channel down because you won't shut up about the news. They just demonetize him. So Mm. it's... I'm not sure that any of it's right, but it's also incredibly complicated. Yeah. Which I think we need to agree on. Do we agree that's incredibly complicated? I agree that I agree the job of the person at YouTube or the the group of people who have to decide what's allowed and what's not is a complicated issue and yeah. it's not right or wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So But I think it definitely goes, you know, deeper. But yeah. For sure. But So when I saw this whole thing with people being like, you know, YouTube needs to do something, I'm usually the person that's like, I think that when once YouTube does that for one person, then it opens Pandora's <sighs> box. I'm going to eat those words right now. Mm-hmm. For in this situation, they need the, to the lack of sorry this was really you know long-winded to yeah. get here, but mm-hmm. like the lack of response on this is unacceptable. It's absolutely fucking unacceptable. I, like I can't even believe it. The fact that a video that defines violating your terms of use is trending on number one. And YouTube, year after year after year, refused to describe to us how and why videos are chosen to be on that place, to be on trending. They say it's like, oh, it doesn't even really impact your views or whatever. We don't know. It's just, you know, it's this fun little thing. No, Like, I understand that some of it's like they don't want to 
perfectly disclose that like they're cherry picking. It's cherry picking. It's cherry picking. It's absolutely biased cherry picking. It's a we group get of it. people at YouTube who are like, okay, this is what's going right, to and they don't want to say that. And then a video that will have thirty thousand views will be on there, and the, all the comments are like, why the fuck is this on trending? I don't get it. I get why you need to pull in new stuff or smaller stuff. You want it to be a curated little like, here's some stuff you might want to check out today. Fine then fucking say that. But to have a video on there that literally defines violating your terms of use, how? We need an explanation for at least that. And I'm not saying, I'm still not in the thought of like, YouTube needs to, or YouTube needs to delete Logan Paul's channel, but he should suffer the same consequences as anyone else in that position. There should be a strike on his channel. I don't know if he's gotten one, but the fact that that was trending, so they never took it down. They didn't give his channel a strike. Instead, they let it trend. They let Logan Paul take it down. They allowed videos to be re-uploaded of it. Those also trended in other countries. And then anyone discussing the topic with other videos were getting flagged, not for like graphic content, which you think maybe they would be, but for like misleading uh, content. I forget what the name of it is. For having a misleading title and thumbnail. That is so It doesn't even make nuts, any dude. fucking sense. That is so nuts. It doesn't even make any sense. And it just, it really irritates me that like, yeah, even in the past with the adpocalypse, with PewDiePie saying the N-word, you know, the, the community gets outraged and YouTube seemingly at some point, if it's going down, they give their stance on it and it's final. You know what I mean? In the past, that's what's happened. So I, I don't know how long we need to wait here for them to fucking say something, but it's unacceptable for them to just not. You know what I'm saying? I 100% agree. And I think it's, if there was ever a clearer violation of whatever terms of fucking service bullshit that they've that they've claimed to have in place this video is it right it is a living breathing proof su test subject a of favoritism. literally what you are not anyone is allowed to do on youtube and right. yet this is going to trend right. oh but oh, don't fucking talk about this bitch or you're going to be demonetized right. this is he's on youtube red okay he can fucking do it. Right. And I know what I not. mean, there's literally no other conclusion we can draw here. Right. Yeah. They didn't say anything. That's, that's, li this is, this is us just describing a chain of events. We're not giving our opinions on any, like, no. this is what fucking happened here. Right. And I, I know we're not comparing apples to oranges here, but PewDiePie did say a racist word in a, in a not cool way. And he was stripped of his YouTube Red show. And this is not a one-to-one -one comparison. No, it's not. But, like, there's a lot of stuff going going on with no response from YouTube. And both Jake and Logan have, Still have, their shows. have YouTube Red shows without that, any type that, of address from YouTube. And this... Not ahead, even, like, we're postponing filming. Yeah. Or, or we're, we're going to look into nothing. Not even a we're going to look into it. <laughs> All... Anyways, uh, I forgot what I was just going to fucking say. But like the YouTube part really pisses me off. It I mean, really pisses me off. And it, it makes it so smaller creators. There's a bigger and bigger and bigger gap. We've known this about YouTube for a while now. That it, it truly used to be a democratized platform with no barrier to entry. And now it is even more difficult for someone who just wants to get started and pick up a camera today to get to where they want to be in a place in YouTube uh, You know, if that's their goal. There, there's no longer a zero barrier to entry. It no. is relatively difficult. Yeah. I get it. But like YouTube, by not saying anything and by showing this, that he was able to have this video on number one trending, no consequences, YouTube Red Show, and you're crushing the little guys on YouTube for making LGBTQ plus content is like mind blowing to me. Mind blowing. And we're not going to accept this like we're looking into it bullshit anymore. If, if you were looking into it, Logan Paul's video would have been uploaded and then immediately flagged and deleted. As if, as if the moment, okay, first of all, as if the moment Logan Paul uploads any video, a team of people aren't notified at YouTube and they can review it and manually review it. it. They like, manually review it. He's got a team over there, okay? Mm -hmm. Number two, that video was up for a way, way, way too long time for any excuse YouTube now gives to be valid. Mm -hmm. There's no, oh, um, we didn't have time to determine or we were cross-referencing. You had a fucking million hours, dude. That video was up for a day almost. That video was up for so fucking long. There's no excuse for the fact that everyone was able to like literally – watch a dead body and be scarred by it and you guys couldn't do so much as to maybe maybe just remove the video 
Not to mention the whole bullshit going on with YouTube kids and that disgusting yeah. mess of what's going on. I mean, at I, this point, like, yeah, there's been situations in the past where we need clarification. We're asking for clarification and YouTube sort of gives us this robot answer that no one wants or clarifies nothing. Fine. Whatever. But at this point, they, they basically just got caught in a, a flat out lie. Which I is, just I honestly can't believe they didn't release any like any sort of anything. I mean, well, it's shocking. It's shocking, and then like I, I'm, I'm literally, I'm gonna be a betting man here and say that this video, where it's gonna be titled Logan Paul the podcast, mm. I think it'll get demonetized, but <laughs> I think it will. I think anyone who's titling, I don't think Logan, you're wrong. Yeah, no, I, I'll check. I'm gonna check it when it goes up, but I, I just can't imagine how I would feel if I was a creator smaller than Logan Paul, which is literally every creator ever except for like you. Uh, who, <laughs> I mean, after. Two days, he's going to have Yeah, listen. he's going to pass you with this <laughs> Maybe stunt. in about six hours. But I can't imagine if I did commentary on my YouTube channel, which there's nothing wrong with doing that as a channel. There's a lot of great commentary channels. But if, if you made a video like reflecting off of something that really fucked you up and you wanted to be honest with your audience or even if you were a vlogger or whatever, you were addressing the whole Logan Paul, Aki Gohara forest situation and you got struck or demonetized, right? Flagged. For inappropriate content, when that bit, when you when you upload, you're like, okay, here's me reacting to the world, and here's me being honest, giving my take on something that really genuinely affected me, which and so I can communicate with my audience. The beauty of social which media, which is what YouTube Everyone is literally has for. A voice. Oh, that's demonetized. Meanwhile, you don't get oh, let's a voice. check the trending page. You okay. don't get a voice, but Logan Paul does. I don't know. There's no other way to really cut it for me right now because there's there's just there's no argument for them, right? Is there an argument for them? No, but that that's what's so ugly about this situation is like, you know, the the argument has always sort of boiled down to we are a relatively self-policing community. We need to talk about these things. And the, the best we can do when something happens and YouTube won't sort of take action, which we've debated a lot in the past about whether or not it's right for YouTube to take action, whether or not they should, whether or not it's their responsibility. You know, I still think that there's a lot of gray area there. So the most we can do is sort of talk about it. But if they're going to take away your voice to talk about it, they're just going to delete the videos or like give your channel a strike, but not Logan's. Now we have a real problem. You're creating a disparity of wealth, a, a barrier to entry, and now you're making it so people can't have an opinion about it. And I want to say, too, about his apology video, what, when Twitter has something on Twitter moments and it's trending number one, like I get, let's, let's give YouTube the benefit of the doubt for one second. So they put maybe this video number one on trending. Here's a wild theory, even though I know it's not true, but maybe they put that video number one on trending because he's sort of an unsavory character to YouTube, even though we know that's not true. He's on a, two YouTube red shows. He's on the movie, The Thinning. So this is in a world where YouTube views Logan Paul as like, we don't like him. Right. So okay. they put that, the the suicide video, number one on trending because they want to sort of show the world, hey, guys, this kid uploads every day. He could, in theory, be on the trending page every single day. We chose today because you want, we, want to, we want to show everybody what a fuckhead he is. Let's imagine that world. Okay. Second world. Let's let's trend his apology number one because we want everyone to know that he's sorry. We're we're just gonna let him, you know, show off his own true colors. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. He monetized that apology. But there were no comments on the video. The important thing to me about Twitter is like when they when when a number one trending topic is controversial and it's number one. There are the, X amount of first, tweets about it. The first thing that you see is the discussion. Yeah. yeah. You know, oftentimes even before you can click on a link to a story or see what's actually going on, you see people's opinions about it. But if you trend something number one without any type of conversation going on in there, it's just feeding more into this machine. The fact that something can trend number one without any comments, wow. You know what I mean? Wow, man. If, if, if someone's apology video, regardless of what it is, has no type of discussion or conversation going on, it should not be trending number one. People shouldn't be able to click on that and then silently think their own thoughts. There has to be a discussion, in my opinion, or else it's just feeding into the machine. That's a good point. You know what I mean? Yeah. The video is no longer there. The video is deleted. So you've deleted everyone's discussion about it. The, the apology video is trending. There's no comments on it. The discussion doesn't exist. And then you have people trying to have a conversation in their own videos that are getting, getting deleted. Flagged. There is no conversation. When you are taking away people's voices, that is unacceptable. 
when you don't when you don't acknowledge the fact that you allowed this to happen that violates your terms of use why does logan paul get to violate the terms of use but people that want to have sex on youtube can't you know what i'm saying like if they wanted to have a porn hub youtube section you know they can't but if logan Paul wants to do whatever the fuck he wants to he can not a good comparison, but you know what I'm saying. If if you're going to make rules, I understand that there's some gray area. There's some wiggle room that needs to happen in order for them. You can't have like blanket black and white rules. That would be a mess. And we know that there's human aspects that go into that. But you can't have one of your top creators blatantly just breaking the rules with absolutely no comment or consequences. It's ridiculous. Or conversation. I mean, if you're going to play favoritism, at least hide it a little bit. They like made no effort. None. None. And Jake Paul has a YouTube Red show as well. And I've always said this about YouTube is that they have everything completely fucking backwards. And we talk about this when we talk about our YouTube representatives, people that we've heard from in YouTube, and everyone has the same thing to say. They are number crunching robots that give you number crunching robot answers when you have questions or concerns. They, they, It's like they have pre-programmed things to say to you that are all incredibly vague and answer absolutely none of your questions because all that matters to them is numbers, which is the, the worst possible way to go about becoming a, a, you know, a competition to, to traditional television or film. If you want people to take you seriously, you can't just like ride the wave of what everyone's paying attention to at the current moment. You have to remember why YouTube is even cool in the first place. Exactly. Which they've completely forgotten at this but point. But you see people come and go and, and you know, it's, it's naive of a 22 year old to think like, I'm on an unstoppable rocket ship and growth is forever. And someday I'm just gonna have like, you know, seven billion subs because that's how many fucking people there are in the world. Like, it, it's not going to happen, yeah. you know? Yeah. And YouTube is so quick to hitch their ladder to whatever is blowing up this year, which I just think is irresponsible. There's so many people, like, when the first round of YouTube Red shows came around and they offered it to, like, Good Mythical Morning and and uh, Smosh, you know, people have proven themselves, like, here, I have a decade of work that yeah. shows you I'm a professional and I take my job seriously mm -hmm. and I'm not here to fuck around and be a douchebag. Yeah. And then you see YouTube pitch their ladders to people like fucking Logan and Jake Paul, who I, like, what? Bitch, what? Didn't you guys start, like, a year ago? Yeah. This is what happens, though. When you guys crunch numbers for a living and only play by numbers, this is what happens. Like YouTube has lost a lot of our respect, and the the Paul brothers have lost the respect of the community. So you all want to get fucking buried together, or like, what you want to do? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. And the reason that everyone, I see this <clears throat> comment all the time. This like, if YouTubers are so upset with YouTube, why don't you just make your own platform? A ridiculous in practice would would be ridiculous to actually do but b we we love youtube we want youtube to be better but part of doing that is that they have no accountability above their head youtube is sort of the end all be all google is sort of the end all be all for them like they don't have to answer to anyone above them which sucks because that level of arrogancy uh, arrogance rather is is like is no it's not productive to them nor the creators it's right. like a, a good example of uh of this is like you looked at the Patreon situation where a couple of weeks ago, Patreon rolled out a whole new system of how they were going to take payments uh, and how they were taking a percentage. Uh, and they didn't tell anyone. They just rolled it out. Mm -hmm. And there was huge outrage. All the Patreon users, supporters were like, whoa, 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 what the fuck is this? I did not agree to this. I'm a, I, my career is based off Patreon, which right. is a lot of people. This is not cool. You know, mass outrage. And they were like, we're sorry. All right. Our bad. Sorry, guys. We're going to not do that. Thank you for telling us. Right. Like, has YouTube literally ever done anything, anything even remotely like that? No. No. And that's. Well, and that's and how much could they benefit from it? Benefit from it. A, a lot. Uh, so much. Heaps. Even just to show the people that their voices are not nothing. Right. And, and it would benefit the platform like crazy. I know they're a gigantic ginormous player in, in the in the internet space. Right. Obviously. They're the number one, whatever. But oh my God, how how far would that go if they just proved once they said that they were i'm listening. sorry i'm we, sorry we did, even we even on a fucking up. apology dude yeah even a, that's a tweet that's all not hey where we're looking in you know just one fucking moment of being a human uh that you're not this giant machine robot that's here to crush everyone but logan paul like just one second of like humility where we can just kind of feel a little bit safe here yeah it goes so long it goes such a long way and it's it hasn't been done in and as long as I can remember by YouTube and in and, uh, and, and the time that they've spent 
policing and making rules and being a robot and shutting people down and not giving a single moment of like actual clarity or or real emotion or or communication it's just grown the distance between the creators and the platform by by tenfold and right. now we feel we're stranded on this island submitting our videos out to outer space and whatever happens to them they're out in they're out in outer space now we don't have communication with outer space they're youtube if we That's want a right. communication, they'll drop a tweet down to earth saying, hey, at this person, we will look into this. And you're like, okay, great. I still don't believe you exist. But that's like this. This is one of the most difficult things, though, is that all of the people that you see speaking out about YouTube and speaking out about Logan and Jake Paul, uh, you know, aside from the celebrities that are allowed to have their opinions or anyone that doesn't work in the YouTube space, everyone's allowed to have their opinions and think and feel how they feel about what happened. It's difficult for us to talk about this stuff with YouTube because it's like biting the hand that feeds you. It's scary sometimes. Like, yeah, I don't think I've had any like weird conspiracies like someone's coming and trying to burn down my house or like silence me or like in, uh, deliberately demonetizing my videos. But it doesn't make it any less scary to speak out against your employer. And I want to add something that I don't – I don't think I'm breaching any sort of contract by saying, but one of the people that I've seen being incredibly vocal about this Logan Paul situation is Rosanna Pansino, who's like one of the most advertiser friendly people you could ever possibly imagine. But she, I, and Logan Paul all have one of the same representatives over at CAA. And even she is like, get fucked. This yeah. is like YouTube saying we want uh, YouTube to be a safe space for creators. Also, YouTube with shows like their YouTube Red Show and like the Logan Paul yeah, thumbnail I didn't know, I did and the not Jake Paul thumbnail. Rosanna Pansino to come out and say what she said. That was very shocking. But this is someone who has a, a past with being, you know, promoted by YouTube. She has the same representative as as Logan Paul as do I over at CAA. It, it's so difficult. It's scary on a lot of levels. Like if I criticize Logan Paul, is CAA going to get mad at, at me, or are they going to get mad at Rosanna Pansino? You see a lot of people like that aren't only scared to talk about about youtube but about oh, other things for other reasons with friendships professional relationships so i mean i i this is not an easy podcast to record it's also not a, dis a discussion that's easy for us to have while being honest it's right just not. but it, it also it, it just like it makes me appreciate when people use their voices when they're when they want to talk about this stuff in a constructive way and not just a i'm looking for retweets so i'd like I just to seen is another one I just like you. The, you one of the most advertiser off friendly. I just seen. Yeah, man. Yeah, you did something fucking wrong. You pissed. I just seen. If I just seen is criticizing YouTube openly, like, come on, fam. yeah, come on. I just seen's the only reason I ever started a YouTube channel. Like, good God, dude. <sighs> I don't know. I just I feel like it's it doesn't get any less difficult to talk about it and. uh the I, just the topic and the nature of this was difficult to talk about, but also every time you know we sit here and openly criticize YouTube, it just gets a little scarier. It and does. Scarier. It does. It's like we want. I mean, it's it's hard to think of it being well received at YouTube that we're that we are critical of what they are doing in whatever situation we might be talking about. Well, it, yeah, it's at an this uncomfortable point, position because at this point, when they've done something and given no response, they got caught red handed letting, you know, doing blatant favoritism and not striking someone's mm -hmm. channel or deleting the video when it blatantly violates your terms of use and not saying anything about it. Like in the past, when we've done these podcasts, it feels like maybe someone might listen to us. If yeah. we speak loudly enough as a community, someone might listen to us. And at this point, it feels like no one's listening to us. No, which is not a good feeling. It's a scary feeling. It's scary because you don't know. You don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. You don't know what's going on, dude. It's wrong. It's fucking wrong. And you guys, you know, if I were a Dink fam looking from the outside, and I'd be disappointed if we sat here every week that something controversial on YouTube happened and just played a game and be like, oh, sorry guys, we can't talk about it because they're paying our bills or like, you know, and fucking. Yeah, fuck you. Fuck you, dude. That's And that's not why you guys are here. That's not why you tune in to listen to us talk. Like, I know that. You can find that vanilla nonsense everywhere else. But yeah, it's not an easy thing for us to sit down and comfortably talk about and go to sleep and wake up and be like, oh, okay, you know, everything's fine. Because we don't – we literally have no idea. 
But with all of that said, we hope you guys um, got something out of this discussion. Um, as always, we encourage you to participate in the comment section. We're going to go through and read what you guys have to say. We and love... please keep it civil. Yeah. I know you guys always do, but just a friendly reminder that, you know, talking down to people or, you know, anything does, and, is not productive uh, and, comment. Yeah. And don't feel like what we said is the right answer. We want to hear your your comments on what we have to say. But yes, in a very civil way would be nice because we're human beings and we're not here to fucking be dicks. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I'm sweating. Yeah. Uh, hopefully next week we can have something a lot lighter and more fun and exciting to talk about. But um, like we said, we felt like it was our kind of our responsibility to touch on this. <sighs> yeah. Um, quick note, we stream on Twitch. If you're new around here, twitch.tv slash Jenna Julian. We stream games all there, uh, all the time. So. And it's like more light. And it's this. more light. <laughs> it's a lot more custom games and PUBG and fuckery. So. Uh, thank you guys so much. We'll see you next week for another podcast. Bye, guys.